Get it out and you need to make a be a be you know. Is it? Yeah. We don't want no baby. Yeah, but if, if you go to the, the guy without the condom, baby will come. Oh. Remember. <laughs> Okay guys, welcome back. Um, I hope you are all well. Um, I am just currently at Travelers now, um, because if you probably saw in my last vlog, you'd know that I'm doing my first collaboration today. So um, I am just meeting with Throp. Um, so I'll take you guys around um, through Travelers and I will see what I can film today, I guess. This is like my first time doing anything like this, so I don't really know what to expect. Um, but yeah, we'll see how we go. Um, and just an update on, if you watched my last vlog, um, about the coconut, the coconut water was good. So it just, I think the difference between like the yellow coconuts and the green coconuts is maybe the more yellow ones have more jelly in it um, and the green ones have more water in it. Um, all right, let me take you around. So this is Travelers. Let's see if I can find throw up. It's really nice here. It's really green. Wow. <laughs> so I think there's like rooms all along here. And then down there leads towards the beach. Um, as you saw, oh wait, here it might be. <laughs> as you saw, the gym was like down there. They have like a family room. <laughs> wow, go on. <laughs> Am I late? No, no, no. I'm just vlogging a little bit. I was showing around oh, travelers. <laughs> you good? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How are you? Good, thank you. Oh, awesome. Do you want me to go down there? Um, we could wait up here. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. all right. Um, is it wait? Is it all right if I walk down there yeah, just yeah, to show? Yeah, that? Okay. Yeah. Um, so down here leads towards the beach. I'll quickly like take you guys down there. There's like a really nice, beautiful pool and like sunbeds. It's really pretty. That was where like the gym was, and then like their family lounge, and then they have like a bar and restaurant type thing here. Hi Mama. These are beautiful. I actually bought a few anklets the other day but then I lost them and oh I like these. Okay I'll have to come back and take a look. Alright. Alright so restaurant and then Look at the beach. Good old Jamaica. And this is like on Seven Mile. And you got like sunbeds, can come chill on. And then, what a life waking up to that. All right, so I'm gonna go Find throp and then I'll keep you guys updated on what's happening because I don't know what to expect <laughs> Okay, we're current I'm currently in um, throps. What would you call this your little studio? Yeah, yeah? <laughs> so I'm here with throp and I'm here with Shaq <laughs> Do you want to introduce yourself? My name is Shaq Lin. I'm a social media manager strategist and content creator living in Jamaica currently <laughs> All right, so we're just um, getting ready to, I guess, film some stuff. I feel a little scared and nervous, but we'll see how it goes. <laughs> no, no worries about it. It's gonna be easy. All right, wow. look at all this tech stuff. Like, <laughs> never seen so much tech stuff in my life. But all right, we got this. I will check back in with you guys in a little bit. All right, wish me luck. <laughs> This is the little setup. Yeah. So let's see how we go. Mm -hmm. Just double check the frame. <laughs> so bless us, yes. 
Hi. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. I really, really appreciate it. Of course, of course. And I appreciate you taking the time. And I feel like it's, this is like the, the beauty of the world of YouTube. Okay, so I just finished the interview and I was a little bit nervous. Um, but, you know, first interview ever. So, I'm gonna say proud. Proud. Um, I just gotta eat now and then keep filming. I also do wanna, I'm gonna um, interview Throp um, and get him to tell you guys like what his channel is about as well. So, yeah, I'll check back in with you guys in a little bit. All right guys, so I wanted to formally or officially introduce you to Throp. Um, I just wanted to chat to Throp a little bit and get him to explain to you guys, you know, what his channel is about and what he does here um, in Jamaica. So please bless us with telling us about yourself. Sure, sure, sure. So I have a channel, it's called Throp on YouTube and I help people move to and invest in Jamaica and it really started out through kind of telling my own story right now I've been living here for about 18 years and came to join my family's business and I had a really rough first year transition to Jamaica really? yeah I, know that. I did and uh, I didn't yeah, borderline didn't like it here I was really? yeah did you come straight to the grill Yep, straight to Negril, uh, graduated from college and moved here and it was like a huge cultural shock for me. I used to come down for the summers like a few weeks at a time, but living here and vacationing here, totally very, very different things. Uh, so I had the culture shock of this like, like socially and then also from being an entrepreneur and business owner um, getting stuff done business-wise here was very different than in the U.S. And uh, unfortunately, in being American, you kind of come in with this mentality of like, we are the best. And it's just, it's just in our culture. And like, I really do think that. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> so I came in with that attitude, right? And so like, like in in terms of like trying to learn the hotel business and uh, even just how things are done here like in my mind there's always an efficient better way to do it and we came to realize this is like you're trying to at least for me i was trying to stick a square peg in a round hole and it made my experience here just so 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 frustrating instead of like accepting and then also seeing the beauty in how things are done here and the first year I was back to New York, I want to say like every four weeks at least because I also had, you couple this this culture shock, if you will, with also having this FOMO of missing out on being a 22 year old that's living in New York City, first jobs, and this is really what I was comparing to like with all my friends. And so they were having their first jobs, their first uh, career experiences, going to happy hour, enjoying the best of New York City. And I was here in Jamaica, like, obviously people were going like, you're an idiot, but like, I was, like, it was really hard, especially at that time, trying to run a business. And, and so I missed my friends, I missed that experience. And that's what made it really tough for me. But then it wasn't until I would say, I started traveling around Jamaica that I really, really started to, to appreciate Jamaica and I really started to love it here. And uh, even now, fast forward to now, like I feel so, so, so lucky to, to be able to call Jamaica my home. And then also like the time that we're in the country, it has grown and changed so much from when I first started moving here to where we are now. And then like on the outlook, when I, when I look at the future of Jamaica, like one, three, five, ten years from now, like it's, it's amazing. I'm very, very bullish on it. And I couldn't say that when I first started moving here, especially, it was a bad time, it was like the financial crisis and then post-financial crisis. Like it was really, really tough to run a hotel business here and just to be in business in general. And it was also really stressful financially. And I was like, I don't know where this country is going. And I didn't have a lot of confidence in, in the future. And I just kind of thought this is, it's always gonna be like this of like worrying about money, stressing about business. And 
this is this is my life, right? Mm -hmm. But like now, it's just like I feel like I got in on Microsoft in the '70s in terms of investing, and I feel like Jamaica is like in such an early stage still. Mm -hmm. And when you look at like all the economic growth, the foreign direct investment that's coming in right now, I am. I, I, I did, I'm like shocked. I'm like shocked like this amount of money and this amount of confidence of, of finance is coming into Jamaica at the rate it's coming in. And I'm just so, I feel so lucky to be here and like so proud at the direction that we're heading in. Yeah, beautiful. So you've obviously been here for a while now. Mm -hmm. um, you know your way around town. A little bit. Um, over the years, like how, I guess what's your experience been like um, traveling around and um, can you touch a little bit on about like how safe you feel here or just your safety? Has that ever been like a concern here? No. And you know, I talk about this on my channel and then like people will be like, oh, it's because you're Winthrop or because you're Wellington. I was like, no, I was like, you know, that may be an excuse for like the grill, you know, but like even like I feel totally safe here. Um, and I'm, I'm a runner. So like usually I'm up in the morning, like before the sun comes up on the streets running and I feel totally safe. There's no place that I don't feel like I couldn't go and not necessarily in the terms of like, I'm trying to test my luck or test whether or not I'm safe here or there, but everywhere I need to go or I want to go, I, I feel perfectly okay. Um, I train all over the country, uh, running on the streets, like, like I, I do marathon training, right? And so, I remember like it was a Jamaican friend, like I was like vlogging on IG, like on my stories. And I was just like, I'm also very like exploratory. Like I like, I went like just took some paths and like my friend, it was actually, sorry, it was my brother's girlfriend. She was just like, be careful, she's Jamaican. And she's like, be careful, um, you know, going in these places and these, and I wasn't anybody's backyard. Maybe it was, I don't know, but <laughs> I don't move around in fear. Like that's my, that's like my mentality. And I mean, if you start thinking like that and you, I feel like you start attracting that. And there's, um, there's never been a time, the only time that like I've had any problems down here, it's been like, uh, it's been girl related, right? <laughs> In the sense that not the girl, it's like, uh, like jealousy uh, over, like so a guy over okay. the girl kind of thing. And it was, yeah, it was just like a, a jealousy situation and that was like the only like real beef I had here, but like I don't even think like I would I would count that. I think that was like a very unique specific situation. And like did I fear for my life? Like no. Yeah. Not at all. Not at all. But that was like the closest to like any issue that I had. So yeah. um, but I will say like anything can happen anywhere, you know, that doesn't because this has been my experience for the past eighteen years doesn't mean like tomorrow something can happen, but that's can also happen in New York. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for sharing your experiences. Um, recommendation on your favorite part of Jamaica that you think I should hit up next? That you should hit up next. Um, favorite part is obviously New Grill. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I shouldn't say that. So I, I always think, I think New Grill is like one of the best places to like move and live. At least I think so, mm -hmm. right? But my favorite place is actually, uh, I think, where you're going to be going soon in Port Antonio. And I think it's the most beautiful part of Jamaica. Uh, I wish I could get there more often. Absolutely, absolutely love it there. I want to do, we're supposed to do a shoot there this year, but I don't know, like an extended shoot, like spend like a few weeks there. But I'm not sure if we're going to actually have that happen. Uh, but you can't go wrong with, with I was there. hoping you were going to say that. <laughs> Paul Antonio, I'm coming for you. There you go, there you go. <laughs> Thanks, Rob. You're respect welcome. And respect, respect. Big up yourself. Yes, all right. Bad as you are. I read. Let me sort this out. So I've just been up, finished up for the day. It's like 4 p.m. Finally leaving. Had such a great time and it was a really great experience. Um, I, your girl needs a jelly, uh, your girl needs a jelly, so let's go check on to see if my OG jelly man is awake today, um, <laughs> I'm just gonna catch like a route taxi, actually maybe I'll just walk, maybe a nice walk would be good, um, yeah, and then I'll chat to you guys when I get back to my, um, place, just cause, 
There's a few things that I wanted to talk about. <laughs> Why are they? <laughs> Assist me with what? <laughs> me good man. I'm just gonna walk. Thank ya, respect, blessing. Eh? <laughs> You're right. You see your eyes, boy. Go watch your alleyway. Eh? Go watch your alleyway. Yeah? yeah really? Yeah, go watch your alleyway. Yeah? You can see a fall, man. Man, dig up here. You walk the street, that man dig up. You see a rich cafe. Yeah? Yeah, man. <laughs> you, <laughs> see all, you see all in the arm. Um, the demonstration. Yeah, 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 yeah the protest. <laughs> Australian. Yeah, man. Bless up. It's bless up, yes. Somebody. Bless up. Yeah. Let's have Jess. Yes, yes, yeah, yes, yeah, man, yeah, man, yeah. Man. Somebody asked, I said Australia, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, man. Man. yeah man, yeah, man. Um, it was nice meeting you. What was your name? Gary. Ga Gary? Yeah, man. Yeah. All right, I'll give you a fist bump. <laughs> Respect, man. It was lovely meeting you, Gary. Yeah, well, you're always walking on the street. Yeah, man. I'm just just chilling in Jamaica, you know, because. There's a bad stigma um, in Jamaica. Yeah, yeah, man. There's a bad stigma in Jamaica that it's dangerous, but... But it's not so dangerous. It's not so dangerous. You've got to be careful everywhere you go, but... You know? You know, even see some people, like, when you're walking on the street, they say, what are you doing here? It's like it's bad. I said, no, man, you're there talking bullshit, man. Yeah. No, man, it's not bad. Yeah, yeah everyone's... Yeah, Jamaica's nice people beautiful. Are here, man. Yeah, man. Nice All people right. Are here. Thanks, Gary. It was lovely meeting you. Yes, respect. Respect, Gary. Respect. Blessings. Yeah, All right. Respect. Uh, just up in near Ricks. Ricks. Yeah, man. All right. All right. Thank, Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, he was just saying that he'd seen, like, my videos before um but yeah i'm on my way back i'll keep you updated i want to go say hi to jelly man and hopefully he's up all right all right let's see mr jelly where he at please don't be sleeping oh he's sleeping let's see oh no i can't do this again not again i'm not waking him up him up Maybe I'll just say Wagwan and see if he answers. <gasps> Wagwan! <laughs> you are good, man. <laughs> no, I'm not. I didn't. Yesterday I came to come get a jelly. And I, and I was here the other day. Do you remember me? Yeah, yeah man. Do you want to be on video or no? <laughs> um, yeah, I came the other day. I know you work nights, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. So I tried to wake you. But I, I didn't want to wake you because you look so peaceful sleeping. <laughs> Can I get a jelly, please? <laughs> Can I put it in a bag, please? Yeah, no problem. All right. Because your jelly coconut had more jelly in it. So where you work nights at? On the road. On the road? Yeah. You need to get inside, right? Yes, please. How do you know which ones have jelly and which ones don't have jelly? Come on, I can't, I can't. Okay. Can I film you cutting it? I would be scared to chop my fingers off. <laughs> mm -hmm. What do you want? 
Yeah, you want to show it to me? I'll buy one. Yeah, you want me to help you open it? Jelly out, me to make a beer, you know. Is it? Yeah. You know, I want no baby. Yeah, but if, if you go to the, the guy without the condom, baby will come. Oh! Remember. Sorry for waking you up. Have a good sleep. Respect. Respect. Yay! So much jelly in that one. So I'm going to freeze it and then eat it later. See? Jelly. Alright. Yeah, good. You want a video? No, not really. My girl might sit and she'll kill me. Eh? My girl might sit and she'll kill oh, me. Oh, all right. You all just right. say hi. Right. Big up yourself. Jamaica. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, man. Um, uh, whilst I was like walking here, I didn't. I tried to film it, but I didn't get it on camera. Um, there was like some guy that started like walking with me, and um, it's not like I felt unsafe. I think if you come here, you definitely have to hold your own and have boundaries and know when to say no and know when to say like no I'm good please leave me alone if you do feel uncomfortable I didn't feel unsafe I just felt uncomfortable yeah good man nah. I gotta go I got I'm in a bit of a rush sorry all right blessings thank ya all right I'll check back in with you guys in a little bit when I um, reach back to my accommodation um, and yeah, I just want to have a bit of a chat. Okay guys, so it's actually been two days since I filmed that clip that you just saw. Um, after the um, filming an interview with Thruff, I was just so exhausted and I just crashed when I got back to my accommodation. But I wanted to finish off this video and I'm wearing the same top just for the sake of consistency because, you know, we like consistency. I had such a good time um filming and being interviewed i was uh very nervous <laughs> but we got there we got there um i'm really excited for you guys to see that interview so i'm pretty sure by the time this is uploaded it should be that interview should be out in like um three days um but yeah just i'll leave drops channel um, if I can work out how to put it in this video, I will. If not, I'll also put it in the bio. So go subscribe um, and I'll let you guys know when that comes out. But yeah, what I wanted to talk about is... 
So during the interview, um, Thrupp asked me why I love Jamaica. And I feel like when I answered the question, I had like something that I really wanted to like say or express, but I feel like I didn't articulate myself um, the best. So I kind of just wanted to touch on it here. So when he, so he asked me, why do I love being in Jamaica? Um, and why I think like why I fell in love with the country. Yeah, there's many reasons to this answer, but something that I realized the other day was Jamaica has healed me, um, healed me as a person and healed some of my biggest demons that I had um, growing up and over the last, I'd probably say like 10 years. The way that I would explain it is, first of all, I feel like being in Jamaica for me feels like escaping the matrix um, in terms of I would say experience a lot of like a Western society being like Australia and also the UK. Australia, um, Jamaica is just like a completely different vibe. I feel like the people here, I feel like in Australia and in London, there's so many people that are like focused and fixated on materialistic things. Um, and I feel like when I first came to Jamaica last year and even being in Jamaica now, people don't really like care about what kind of clothes you wear, you know, what kind of job you have. And obviously I'm sure there's like parts of Jamaica that that is a thing. Um, but I would describe Jamaica as very much more like humbled and down to earth, um, that's just what I, the energy that I pick up anyway. And what I wanted to say, and another thing that I realized was Jamaica does not have beauty standards. And I don't know if that, like I'm explaining myself right, but I would say maybe toxic beauty standards. And I'm, I'm just saying from like what I feel and my personal observations and the energy that I pick up from this country is that it is love and it is love for every body, every race, every shape, every size, every age, every color. And that is not something that you have the privilege of experiencing in other countries that hold very toxic beauty standards. And I'm going to speak as a woman here, growing up in Australia and then also being influenced by, you know, um, American media and then also, you know, having experienced um, living in London as well. I feel like Western societies have a very, very toxic view and it hold a toxic beauty standard for women. Um, and I feel like that does not exist in Jamaica. In Australia, like I know certain parts of Australia that I have visited the main beauty standard. And obviously I've been to very, um, I've been to different countries and I've experienced experienced the, the different beauty standards for each country. Like in Australia, if you go to certain parts, if you're not blonde, skinny um, and like have blue eyes, then, you know, that, that, that in some places of Australia is the beauty standard. Um, and especially nowadays with so much like plastic surgery and so many influences that do get their like bodies altered it is like i think it's tough growing up in this in this day and age because there are so like i said such toxic beauty standards out there especially in western society and even Asian, like Asian cultures as well, like being in China, like 
people want to be as fair as they can be, as um, slim as they can be, have like big eyes over there. Whereas like if you go to Australia, people want to be dark, people want to be tanned. Um, and I feel like that is just completely null and voided in Jamaica. <laughs> and that I have so much respect for that. And I feel like Jamaica has just given me the opportunity to be myself and feel okay being myself. Um, talking about these beauty standards, I actually, um, so I suffered with an eating disorder, um, for over 10 years that started when I was very young. Um, and a lot of it was to do with wanting to look like this, like, you know, what the media portrayed as beautiful. Um, and <laughs> I, and it was like one of my biggest demons that I struggled with, like, and everyone has like their vices, I believe. And for me, um, food was one of my vices. Um, and I used it to like cope in certain situations. And then when I was here last year, when I stayed with Lyndon, who is the Rasta man whose Airbnb I stayed in for a month. Um, he was like my biggest, like, I guess, confidant, advisor, I, I guess like spiritual teacher. Um, and I remember asking him and like talking him, talking to him, um, about this. Um, and I remember saying to him, like, when is like me using food as like one of my vices going to go away? And, um, I remember him specifically saying to me, he said, Jess, it'll go away when you find your purpose. <laughs> and I'm not going to get choked up here, but I feel like this time round coming back to Jamaica, like I've found like my purpose and I will forever be grateful for that. And I feel like that vice or that demon has after, <laughs> after like 12 years, Okay, <laughs> hold on. <laughs> I feel like that demon that I battled with for 12, like for over 10 years has finally gone away because he was right. Like I did like find my purpose and Jamaica has been that vessel for me. So that is why I will forever be grateful for this country and for the people here. And in terms of Jamaica not having like me feeling like Jamaica does not have any like particular type of beauty standards, that is a testament to both the men and women here in Jamaica because obviously I don't want to generalize and I, I don't know what, you know, demons people have, but especially for the women, I feel like they just embrace who they are and they the energy that I get from them is that they just like generally love themselves for like who they are. Um, and they celebrate like their curves and they celebrate like everyone really. So to that, like I hold so much respect. There's actually a song that kind of like, um, describes how like I, I see it. So it's a song by any, hold on, let me get it up. Um, Okay, so the song is called Peng Black Girls and there's like a, there's a lyric in here that goes, <laughs> it goes, want a fat booty like Kardashians? No. Want a fat booty like my auntie got? Yo. And like to that, like I just think like, want a fat booty like Kardashians? No. Want a fat booty like Jamaican aunties got? Yo. <laughs> Yeah, and then I guess like even though I hang, I I I I, I give Jamaican men shit for like being players or whatever. Um, I will big them up, and I will give them like so much respect for loving every woman, like no matter race, like age, um, size, shape. Honestly, to both Jamaican men and women, respect. And I feel like Western countries should use Jamaica as an example on what 
or what beauty standards to hold or not hold because this country is a prime example of just embracing everyone for who um, they are and you know it's one love and a lot of people will here will say one love and it, it genuinely is one love so I feel like when I answered that question in the interview I didn't articulate myself to the best of like my ability or to what I was happy with so I just wanted to jump on here and say like thank you thank you that is thank you to Jamaica thank you to Jamaicans because you have literally like healed me and for that I will forever be grateful and I will forever be in debt to you because and I that is one of the main driving forces that I have to do this country justice and to remove those negative, negative stigmas about this country. So for anyone thinking about coming to Jamaica, I can honestly say that it would, it's like the best thing that you could do for yourself, <laughs> for your mental health. Um, and I genuinely do just want people to come here and like see for themselves like how great this country is and how much healing I have gotten from this country. So big up yourselves. Anyone who has never been to Jamaica before, come to Jamaica. You know, you'll see. You will see. All right, guys. I think I have spoken for long enough. Um, I have some really fun content coming up for you guys showing you beautiful Jamaica so please stay tuned I hit 5k subs um, 5k subs yesterday so I just wanted to thank thank you all um, for all the love and support and if you're not subscribed please subscribe um, and yeah, I can't wait to see you guys in my next video. And, you know, I can't thank you enough for being on this journey with me. All right. I genuinely, genuinely love you guys with so from the bottom of my heart. Okay. Love, blessings and respect. All right. See you later, mate.